What makes live shows so special is that interaction between the viewer and the host and the guest, whether it's through the chat or the live phone calls. This connection is created because people are allowed to share their experiences, their feelings, their thoughts, and um, this. Makes for a beautiful dynamic of energy that's connecting people in so many different ways, and that's how we learn. That's the best way we can help one another is by connecting at such deep levels. This is Della Futui, the host of Della's Voice, hoping. To spark your soul. Hello and welcome to another Della's Voice Sunday Live Talk Show. Today we're talking about、uh, substance use and mental health. If you have had any struggle yourself with sub- substance use and substance abuse, you know that taking that. The、um, road to sobriety, making that decision to、uh, change your life around, is a difficult one, and it takes a lot of courage, and it takes a lot of work, and a lot of effort. Today, we are going to speak to a young woman who is、uh, doing exactly that. But before we go there, we have a lot to talk about. I'll be right back. Stay with me. Welcome back. On October seventeenth, twenty eighteen, cannabis became legal in all provinces and territories for adults eighteen and over, making Canada just the second country to legalize recreational use of the drug. The Cannabis Act was introduced by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's government just a few months before. The legalization government of Canada published this on their website in March of 2018 about mental health effects of cannabis. I am quoting: In some people, cannabis use increases the risk of developing mental illness such as psychosis or schizophrenia, especially those who start using cannabis at a young age. Use cannabis frequently, daily, or almost every day, or have a personal or family history of psychosis and/or schizophrenia. They continue. Frequent use of cannabis has also been associated with an increased risk of suicide, depression, anxiety disorders. There is evidence to suggest that combining tobacco with cannabis can increase the strength of some psychoactive effects, the risk of poor mental health outcomes, including addiction. So, question comes to why? Why was this legalized? With all this information, hear this again. Same site, health effects on the on our youth. Research shows that the brain is not fully developed until around age of twenty five. So youth are especially vulnerable to the effects of cannabis. It's crazy, because their brain has not yet fully developed. The THC in the cannabis affects. The same biological system in the brain that directs brain development. Cannabis use has been associated with increased risk of harms when it is frequent, when it continues over time, when it begins early in life, and some harms are not fully reversible. <laughs> 
it's really, really important for, for you. If you're a parent, if you're a teacher, if you're a coach or other trusted adults to be ready to talk with them, our youth about drugs, because the information is out there. Um, if we're aware, we can make others aware. Here's some statistics for you. It's crazy. An estimated 16.3% of Canadians aged 18 to 24 now report near daily cannabis use. This number has increased 65% since it was legalized. Emergency departments visits and hospital hospitalizations hospitalizations due to cannabis in Canada are also up 8% uh, between 2019 and 2022, 2020, sorry, between 2019 and 2020. I'm going to give you the right sp uh, statistics here. A new report says cannabis has contributed 43.5 billion to Canada's gross domestic product and 13.3 billion to Ontario's since recreational pot was legalized back in 20 in October of 2018 one in 3 who use cannabis will develop a problem with their use it's also estimated that one in 11 that's 9% of those who use cannabis will develop an addiction to it. Um, if you've ever smoked pot and you've been around people who smoke pot, they will tell you, marijuana is not addictive. Hmm. Well, there is proof that it is. I lived proof that it is. This is st statistic rises to about one in six, which is 17% for people who started using cannabis as a teenager. So if you've started smoking pot when you were a teenager, chances are you'd be, um, your chances of becoming addicted to it is higher. So for some of you, you're asking what the heck is marijuana? So just a little information on this. Marijuana is a dried, uh, dried leaves and flowers of the cannabis um, plant. The stronger form of the drug include um, high potency strains known as sinsomea or hashish or hash for short. There are five, more than 500 chemicals in marijuana. The THC chemical in the marijuana is responsible for many of the drugs psychotropic, which means mind altering effects. It's the chemical that distorts how the mind perceives the world. In other words, THC is what makes a person high. The amount of THC in marijuana has increased over the past few years. Can you believe this? The average THC content in marijuana was less than 4%. It's now about 15%. That's more than three times. And much, and it's much higher in the oils and the extracts that people are using. Scientists don't even know, really, how this increase in potency means for a person's, um, what it means for a person's health. They don't know. Some people adjust how they uh, consume marijuana because it's now higher potency. They, you know, compensate in other ways so that they can adjust. But there have been reports of people seeking help in emergency rooms with symptoms, including nervousness, shaking, and psychosis. And for those who don't know what psychosis means, is having false thoughts or seeing or hearing things that aren't there. Um, 
I mean, there are so many ways people are using marijuana. If you're a parent and um, you're, you know, you're you're worried about your teenager, you may want to hear what what are some ways you want to educate yourself, right? You want to educate yourself. Um, people are using marijuana in different forms. They smoke it like a hand rolled cigarette, and they're called joints. Um, they in, they inhale the smoke using a bong, or they inhale vapors using devices. And um, um, you you've probably seen the uh, vaporizers that use marijuana extract in uh, liquid form. And there's you know those um, drinking teas or um, the edibles in form of cookies and cakes. Uh, or candy. Um, Then there is the synthetic marijuana. Dangerous stuff. This is laboratory made um, and um, very strong, much stronger and very dangerous. This can cause overdose deaths. Uh, so what happens to our brain when we when uh, marijuana enters our body? Um, so the high or the intoxication effects of marijuana is the result of alterations that happen in the brain chemistry. Uh, marijuana acts primarily on cannabinoid receptors in the brain. These are receptors that are or that are in our brain. Okay. We naturally produce substances that bind to these receptors. And these substances are called endocannabinoids. Marijuana contains a chemical called THC, which um, exogenously, which means from the outside, binds with cannabinoid receptors. This then leads to a psychological experience of being high. It's really, really important to know that this drug also acts on other mood-regulating neurotransmitters called dopamine. Um, There are those of us who are more sensitive, okay? So those who are sensitive to higher levels of neurotransmitter dopamine or already have higher levels can experience aggression, physical agitation, anxiety, panic, and types of depression, mania, delusions, hallucinations, and paranoia. Cool, huh? The brain changes caused by intoxication are often mistakenly thought to be temporary and only chemical in nature. This is really, really important to know that research indicates, however, that marijuana use also negatively impacts brain structure. For example, if you use marijuana once per week, It's been associated with altered size and shape of brain structures, specifically the nucleus accumbens and amygdala. These are part of the brain responsible for regulating motivation and emotion. And so if you know, um, you know, if you've had experience, I know for me, it was like that. The, I, I had all these dreams and aspirations that I wanted to achieve. And the moment I smoked um, that first, that first puff, all of it was gone. No more motivation was left. Another brain structure important in learning uh, and memory is the hippocampus. And then the hippocampus, it also appears in the research that um, goes through uh, structural alterations after marijuana use. This part is really, really scary. It's not known if any of these effects on brain structure can be reversed. 
So my take on this is the sooner you give it up, the better it is. There's a website called mentalhelp.net. Here, they're looking at uh, marijuana addiction in teens. Research shows marijuana addiction in teens. Notice the word addiction, please. Marijuana addiction in teens causes poor educational achievement. Teen marijuana use is associated with lower grades and test uh, scores, less likelihood of attending college, and higher high school dropout. It's been associated with poor peer and partner relationships in later life. It's associated with cognitive impairment. A decline in IQ has been found in chronic users who began use in their teens and continued into adulthood. An average loss of eight IQ points from childhood to midlife has been reported. Addiction. So there's been research and proof that onset of marijuana use in the teens has been linked to later addiction to marijuana and other substances. Psychiatric problems. Teen use of marijuana is associated with higher rates of psychosis in adult life. Those who have used by age 18 are two to four times more likely to receive a diagnosis of schizophrenia later in life. Also, research shows a correlation between repeated teen use and depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, and personality disorder. I think I've made my case. There's a lot of data. There's a lot of information uh, to show that marijuana use is, is not as innocent as some people may make it seem. Um, I struggled with this. I lost a good 10 years of my life um, to, the, to the abuse. And um, I don't want anyone else to lose out on life. Next, I have um, a young woman here who will be sharing her lived with experience with the effects of marijuana also living uh, with um, mental health disorders. Last year, um, we had her on Della's voice. She was so brave, and um, she talked about her mental health, and she also admitted that she was using marijuana to cope with her mental health issues. This year, she... um, messaged me and she said she is um, giving up marijuana and she wants to come back and talk about that. Zoe Rafi is a brave young woman who has been experiencing mental health struggles since she was 14 years old. She's been diagnosed with eating disorder, borderline personality disorder, psychosis, major depressive disorder, anxiety, OCD, and PTSD. Last year, we interviewed Zoe Raffi on Della's Voice, speaking on her struggles with mental health. This year, she's back once again, this time to talk about and share her experience and the effects of marijuana use on mental health, a subject that is rarely talked about. Ladies and gentlemen, Please help me welcome this brave young woman, Zoe Rafi, author, speaker, 
and mental health advocate on Della's Voice. Hi, Zoe. How are you? I'm good. How about you? Good. I'm so happy you're here today. I'm very honored to be on your show again. Ah, oh, sweetheart. Um, so you wanted to be here today. Yeah. Why? To bring knowledge and show people what marijuana can actually do to your mental health. Because I never considered it as an addictive substance until recently. I've considered it as a dependency drug. So what that would mean was like that you couldn't get addicted to it and blah, 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 blah. Of course. <laughs> um, so once I started stop smoking, I got withdrawal symptoms and I'm like, I'm addicted to weed. Mm. So I wanted to bring awareness to that. Uh, thank you so much. You know how I feel about this um, because I've lived the, this experience. And I know, I know that a lot of times we put our head in the sand right? And um, we pretend that uh, what we believe is the truth. Yeah. And um, so um, tell me why you decided uh, to give it up. Well, it was, I, I had a hard time holding a knife, to be honest, because of my psychosis. And I was starting to see faces again. And like, it was really struggling my psychosis. So I called up my psychiatrist and I was like, uh, what do I do? Um, I'm not too sure what to do because the THC levels were like maybe 25% that I was smoking. So like, he told me to stop it indefinitely and it will stop all my problems. Okay. And, and ever since I cut down, like I haven't had any problems. I just use it for my anxiety when I need to. But other than that, I don't smoke it. Mm. Uh, when did you first start using marijuana? September of 2020. I actually, um, this was before all the pot stores opened in um, Aurelia. I went to a uh, bong store and the owner gave me a joint. And that was the very first time that I smoked weed. And that's what got me hooked. Mm. Um, what, what was it that got you hooked? What did you get from it? Um, it was the high. I like not, I like feeling numb. Because it made my mental health like melt away and I didn't feel a thing. And I think a lot of people can agree with you. That's exactly why uh, we use substances. Marijuana, just one, but I mean, alcohol is another one. You know, we use that and a lot of other addictions. I think we use it because it makes us numb. You agree? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I want to ask you, you know, ever since this whole legalization, um, it, you know, I know that they say oh, it's illegal for for um, those 18 and over. How hard is it to get pot if you're not 18? Um, honestly, it's pretty easy if you go on third party websites because Sometimes Canada Post will just drop it off and not ask for signatures or anything. So you can lie about your age. So it's very easy for younger people to get it, especially if you know the website. And um, it's funny. It's not funny. It's, 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 it's scary, but it's funny at the same time. Do you think that legalizing pot was a good idea? Good idea? No, but... I don't think it was at all. I was never for pot. It was never anything that I thought I would ever do. And I don't think it's a good idea that Justin Trudeau um, legalized it. But, like, it affects younger people's mental health and it just makes it worse. And if what you said in the beginning in the intro was true, then why would he legalize it? my question exactly well do you know there's a lot of money that is gained from this yeah right as you heard 43 billion well here in angus they have four pot shops mm -hmm. in angus alone so like that's crazy because one angus is a small town two you shouldn't be pushing weed on younger people like that especially when it can cause mental health issues you know what i mean um Knowing what you know, Zoe, 
uh, that uh, marijuana affects your mental health. How will you use this information? Um, well, quitting it for sure, because it just made everything worse. It made my meds go up. It just made everything worse. And, um, yeah, I think that me getting off of it will help me in the long run because I want to go back to school. I want to hold a job and I can't do that when I'm smoking weed all the time. Um, I feel like we, because we don't have the right information, right. And because, um, when when you smoke pot, it, like you said, it makes you numb. It takes it gets rid of those feelings, right? Those bad feelings that you have. Um, you, you smoke it because you feel like it's going to make you feel better. Yeah, right. So thinking back at your experience when you started smoking pot, um, what kind of bad feelings was it numbing? for you if you could be like you know if you could give us a little bit of insight into what it was doing for you well i struggle with well um borderline personality disorder psychosis ocd ptsd um what's depression major depressive disorder and um it took away my suicidal thoughts it took away my um psychosis at th at the time I just didn't hear voices I didn't see anything happening I didn't have the fear of people out to get me like it was that's why I started smoking and that's why what it did to me um so during those times when you were smoking um you weren't having those suicidal thoughts anymore you weren't scaring um, the at the beginning, but it slowly started to get worse. I'd say in April of 2021, um, that's when I was first hospitalized. Well, not first, but that's when I was hospitalized for the first time in a long time. Mm -hmm. And that's when everything started up again. But well, then I, I just started smoking more weed to numb the pain and I was smoking up to six grams a day. Um, I think that's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to ask you, why were you hospitalized? Um, I was wanting to attempt suicide. Why Zoe? Um, I was just tired of life I, where I was living. I was depressed. Um, it just wasn't a healthy environment at all. Okay. Um, so life must have been really hard for you. Yeah. What was causing all that pain? Well, my ex best friend and I didn't really, we, I mirrored her. It's part of my borderline personality disorder. So I mirrored her. I, um, took up on her language. I, uh, did everything she did. I wanted everything she wanted. Like it was bad. I mirrored her to the point that our relationship was getting toxic mm -hmm. and um, I just couldn't take it. Um, so, so you, um, did you attempt to commit suicide? No, the last time I attempted was back in August. Okay. This, this past August. Yeah. Um, what happened? Could you tell us? Um, I was just feeling really suicidal, a lot of overwhelming feelings because my ex best friend and I got into a fight and we were name calling each other and everything. And it was bad. It just got very overwhelming. All the thoughts and the feelings about it that I just didn't want to deal with it anymore. Mm -hmm. So you thought of taking your own life and to end the pain? Yeah. So you weren't successful. Thank God. I'm so glad. That didn't happen. Um, what was going through your mind when you were at the hospital? Um, well, I wish that they wouldn't save me, but the hospital that I went to was just bad. They treated me really badly, and um, 
uh, I just didn't get much from the hospitalization as I was there for seven days and they just kept me in a room. Mm -hmm. What were you, what were you, what were you looking to get there? Um, help. I was looking to get, um, hopefully into DBT. I was hopefully looking to get into different programs, but the, um, psychiatrist I saw wasn't that helpful and just kind of sent me home. So you've been living with all sorts of mental health struggles all and it's it breaks my heart. Um but it seems like this is what's happening um in 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 Canada anyways. I'm not sure with other countries, but you know you you're suffering from this um mental health and then you you go to the hospital because you because that's where you go if you're not feeling well. Yeah. And so there's no help because, no. right? And so give me, give me some of your experience. How many times have you been hospitalized over the years? Any, like, do you have a? Um, my psychiatrist told me because I asked him. Um, he told me back in 2020, I was hospitalized six times. And then 2021, I believe I was hospitalized six times, I think. So each time you went to the hospital, um, was it for specific reason or was it because you, you, did you go yourself or did they take you or? Um, sometimes an ambulance was called. Um, sometimes I would walk to the hospital myself and sometimes I would just take pills and. Try to end it. Yeah. Um, so you go to the hospital and you're asking for help and, um, what do they do there? Like, do they give you drugs to calm you down? No. Um, what they do is they t give you to a crisis worker and you talk to them about how you're feeling and then they'll assess you, see if you're safe to go home or not. But, um, when I was in the hospital back in August, uh, I overdosed and the psychiatrist, the very first question she asked me was, are you safe to go home? And I'm like, mm -hmm. what? Hmm. So. They they want you to go home because this is a revolving door. I heard that. I've heard this statement so many times, Zoe. The hospitals are a revol revolving door. The system is flawed. There's nothing they can do. They keep um, patients with mental health go th in the hospital in order to get help. They don't get any help. They just get sent home once they are deemed to be stable. Yeah. And this 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 vicious circle keeps happening because the right help is not there. Yeah. Um. So so you go home. Do you, do you actually have support? I have my mom and my grandma here. Um, they're very supportive. And I have my cat. She's very supportive too. The cat, the pet. And then I have my boyfriend who is phenomenal. Like he is amazing. Um, he has been with me since I quit weed. And he's been through the whole path, the whole anxiety, panic attacks, everything. Just, he's just phenomenal. He gets it. Yeah. He understands. Um, when you finally decided to give up pot, um, were you able to? No. I went three weeks without it, and then I had a massive panic attack, and I smoked some just okay. to get the anxiety away. Okay. Okay. Um, so, um it, it took it away. Yeah. And then, and then what? I just had bad feeling like regret after doing it. Cause I was three weeks sober mm -hmm. and that's the first time that I've been three weeks sober in a year and a half. I so get you, Zoe. <laughs> I so get you. I so understand because it's hard mm -hmm. giving up, giving up pot is a People say, oh, it's not addictive. Yeah, and that's what I keep tell I kept telling myself. I every night that I smoked pot, I would say to myself, I'm gonna quit. This is the last time. 
and then the next day would come and all this these bad feelings and emotions will come and then I'd want another high because that just numbed me yeah so I get it I get it so um okay so you went with three weeks without pot how were you feeling tell me about that I had a lot of withdrawal symptoms. I was barely eating. I had a lot of anxiety. I had some depression, some suicidal thoughts. Um, But I was able to push past through it without going to the hospital, without doing anything. Um, It was bad, but it got better. How did they get better? Uh, Tell me. Um, The withdrawal symptoms went away, and I could actually hold a knife without thinking about hurting myself. Um, I could actually not see faces anymore and like everything kind of went back to quote unquote normal. Is that during those three weeks? Yeah. Okay. And so you're sober, these thoughts come and then you, you kind of, what were you using as a coping mechanism to, to get through those, um, thoughts? Well, I have extra anxiety medication that I take. So sometimes that helps. Um, sometimes I go for a walk, but that's about it. Okay. I don't have many coping mechanisms other than weed. Okay. And, um, we, so this is, this is another one of those issues, isn't it? Because we're not given, uh, other coping, coping skills and, uh, it's just easier. Oh, here's some pot, smoke it and you'll feel much better. Yeah. But for how long, right? For how long will I feel better? And then um, there comes a time when you actually have to deal with those emotions. And I think for me, that's what happened is when I decided that this is not going to work for me. Like I can't keep using this to numb my uh, feelings. I need to, I need to be able to find other coping mechanisms. So some of the things I found were really helpful for me were breathing through those um, tough times, Um, you know, when I, when I breathe deeply, um, I calm down. Uh, and so I, and I, I I had to do that like all the time, all the time. There'd be times when, you know, it was that someone was, you know, nagging at me, go light up, go light up. And I, I really had to resist those temptations and it was hard. So, um, so now are you at the moment smoking pot? Uh, yes, but just for my anxiety and okay. panic attacks. So when you say for my anxiety, uh, what's that like? What's that trigger for you? Overthinking. Cause I struggle with BPD and I overthink a lot and more than what the average person would. And then I freak out like majorly. And then that's when I need the bomb. Um, so explain to me what that's like. Be that's uh, bipolar personality disorder. Is that borderline? Borderline. Bo- so B. Sorry, borderline personality disorder. What is that like? It's a lot to deal with. Um, you mirror people. You don't have a sense of who you are. It's all black and white thinking. Um, there's no good, no bad. It's just like, and there's no middle. I mean, there's no middle. It's just good or bad. That's what I meant. Gotcha. Um, yeah. And it's either you hate someone or you love someone. Mm-hmm. Um, Could you love and hate the same person at different times? I don't know. I've never really experienced that. But like with my ex best friend, I love her and then immediately turned to hate. Mm-hmm. So, and there is no reversing that. Okay. Okay. And do you ever question yourself? Um, sometimes. Sometimes I wonder why I have to go through this and why I have to deal with it. But when those thoughts come, like let's say, let's say you, you know, you 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 say you you hate it or you either hate it or you you love it. Mm-hmm. Um, do you ever question that? Do you ever question that thinking style? Yes, all the time, because Mm -hmm. there should be a happy medium in there as well. There shouldn't just be yes or no. You know what I mean? Yes. There should be a happy medium, which I can't seem to find. Mm. Um, 
what's what's something that helps you tremendously cope um other than weed my boyfriend helps me cope a lot okay he calms me down i call him he calms me down and um yeah he helps me out a lot okay is he always available yes okay so what if what if one day he's not available um then i would probably go for a walk that's a good plan b yeah i feel like uh, it's really important to have plan a and plan b and plan c right um the fact that you're here today um i mean just shows how much courage you have and how the fact that you're 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 showing up here talking about this uh, with so much honesty um, means that you're not hiding behind anything. What what is your intention with this? Like, what what is it you want to accomplish? Well, I just want to get it out there to the younger people and people who currently have psychosis or borderline personality disorder or depression or whatever. Um, that in their smoking weed, that uh, you can get off of it and that, um, you can get better and that life just ha- is more than just weed. You know what I mean? Um, thank you. I, I want to ask you, uh, this question because it's, it's, it's really important to me that I do ask. Um, you said you are using still marijuana to cope with your anxiety. Yeah. Um, any plan of just completely yeah. giving it up and finding other ways to cope? Yep. Yeah. I bought two grams the other day and um, I gave away I all love, my bags. I love you, Zoe. You're so sweet and you're so honest. I I just love you. <laughs> Okay, tell me. And I gave away all my bongs, my pipes, my ashtray, my trays, my grinder, my hash press, my lighters, everything. I gave them all away except for one bong, which I'm giving away once these two grams are done. And then that's when I plan on stopping it. You know, something happened um, (laughs) that this just reminds me because I used to play these games with myself, right? Um, But once this is done, I'm, I'm done. I, I said that a lot, Zoe, and you tell me if, if uh, what you think of this. Um, the day I start, I, the day in, back in October of 2018, uh, when I decided to quit for, for good, um, I made a pact. I made a commitment uh, to not just to myself, but a whole bunch of other people who I knew would keep me accountable. And um that was regardless of whether I had, I still had any pot or not, because it wasn't a question of, oh, what this is going to go to waste. <laughs> no, that to me, I made my decision that day. And I, and I, I promised myself that I was going to do this and I was going to keep my commitment to me because I was no longer going to live uh, this, um, this life. And so uh, I did. And uh, I, I've never gone back. I came home and uh, I uh, got rid of the pot. So I I can't remember what I did with it. I gave it away or I I can't remember what I did with it. But um, that was that was the decision I made. What would stop you from buying more pot? Um, I'd say the fact that I'm trying to better myself. And I'm trying to get a job and going back to college. And um, I just don't want to go down that path again, that where I was, where I had no motivation. I couldn't do anything. And all I wanted was that bomb. That's all I could think about. And I'd constantly go out for hits. Um, I, you have a lot of, you have a lot of my respect Zoe, last year you were here and uh, you talked about this book that you were a part of. Yes. Um, called Brainstorm Revolution. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, in that book, you had um, co-authored and you had a chapter in that book. Um, I don't know what to tell you. I, I, like, I don't know how to tell you that what you did in that book um, impacted uh, other people. But I'm pretty sure that it has. When you were here on this talk last year, you impacted a whole bunch of people. You're here today. You're impacting a lot of people. There are parents watching this show who know exactly what you're talking about because they have kids struggling right now. Um, so I want you to talk to these parents. Okay. How can they support their, their kids, their sons, their daughters, if they are going through the same thing? And uh, how can they... How can they support them so that these young people could find hope and they live on and um, have better lives? Um, I'd say just talk to them, be honest with them about how you're feeling. Um, don't make them feel guilty, though, but make sure that you get your point across that like you are worried about them that and like tell them the statistics and everything about how marijuana affects the mental health. Thank you. Last, uh, a couple of years ago, this was when those, you know, the vapes that, yeah. yeah. So they, they were like really popular. My son, who was probably 15 or 16 at the time, came to me and said, he wants to get a vape. I said, uh, why? He said, oh, it's because, you know, they're cool. Everybody else has them. And, uh, there's, they're not, there's, it's not like smoking mom. This is just a natural vape. Yeah. So <laughs> when you, when you say be honest with them and show them statistics, I said, okay, so let's go find some information. So we went online and we looked on a website and um, uh, we checked and there was, there, there was so much information and there was a lot of statistics saying that people who uh, vape, uh, are going to turn uh, to cigarettes later and they're going to want to smoke other things. And uh, yes, they are addictive. So wh what you just said reminded me of that because I could have snapped, I could have yelled and I could have said, absolutely not, you are not allowed to do. But I, that would not have worked. And it just make them want to do it more. Exactly. You're so right. But instead, like showing them information and having that those conversations um, on a mature level and uh, giving them the information they need because n nobody wants to harm themselves. No. Right? Right. Um, Zoe, um, I want to thank you, but I want to ask you, what's next for Zoe Rafi? I want to see you back here next year. Well, I plan on coming out with a book in 2025. That book I was talking about last year? Yes. I still plan on coming out with it. Okay, why 2025? That's such a long time from now. That's three years from now. <laughs> why not, what have you started? Um, I'm, sl I'm slowly working on it. Okay, well, I say it doesn't take three years to, to, to do a book. Uh, you can do it in a shorter time because I want to see you next year here and I want you to be talking about that book. Okay. And um, there's a whole lot of um, messages for you in the chat. Uh, a lot of respect for you. A lot of um, shout outs to you and your courage and how brave you are. And, uh, and this information that we brought today is very very helpful to a lot of people. I know, um, I know that it's going to um, make some change, and that's exactly what we want, isn't it? Yes. Yes. What is your hope, Zoe? What is your hope? Tell me. Well, my hope is that they um, do change the weed age to 25, 26. Um, that's my hope, but I know that's probably not going to happen. Um. But my hope is that people get the message and understand that 
weed does impact your mental health in a negative way if you use it for a long periods of time. That is truly, I, that's what I want to. Um, and, um, you know, there's a lot of people that are using um, cannabis for medical reasons yeah. and uh, to, you know, to, to um, help them with their pain. And there's a lot of cancer patients who are using um, uh, cannabis uh, benefits. So definitely, you know, there's, a, there's, there's benefits, there's medical benefits to cannabis, but it's not to be used. It's not you to be abused. This, yeah. This is what I want. And I think the only way we can achieve that is if we are informed and we know the facts and uh, we look to the right resources uh, and um, make a decision based on information rather than emotion. And that's really, really important to me. Um, Zoe, there is um, uh, there is a I, I'm going to actually uh, put down this number uh on um in the chat because if you're struggling with marijuana addiction and depression and you need help you can definitely use this resource and i want to make sure that we keep give this to people so that it's available for you if um you need it so it's going to be scrolling uh at the bottom here um, that number is one 306 3026 If you're struggling with marijuana use uh, and depression, please call that number. If you need more information, there are plenty of resources online. Uh, just make sure that you go to the right place um, and get the right resource. Some of the resources are Canadian Mental Health Association. Uh, another place is CMHA. Uh, sorry, that no CAMH, the hospital, and uh, they have a site and there's a lot of information on there. If you are thinking of um, suicide, please call this number 1 456 4566. Um, your life is worth so much. Um, Zoe, what would you say to someone who wants to take their own life? Um, I understand exactly what you're going through in the thought process of what you're going through, but, um, in the end, it's not worth it because you have a whole life ahead of you and like recovery is possible because I've done it myself with an eating disorder with, well, suicidal thoughts. I've done it myself. So recovery is possible. It may take medication. It may take some work it will take a lot of work like dbt or whatnot cbt whichever one works for you um but in the end your life is worth it and great. you don't want to throw it away it's a great message you are so valuable zoe raffi you are you are needed in this world young lady um you better stick around and uh because I, again, I want to see you next year here and I want to hear all these fantastic things you're doing and how you're, you're impacting the world. Okay. Uh, thank you for being here today, Zoe. Thank you so much. Well, thank I really you for having me. Of course, of course, any brave young lady who's willing to share their experience from the heart and be so honest and so vulnerable is always welcome on Della's voice. Thank you so much. I want to thank you for spending uh, your this past hour with us and i hope you took some inspiration from this some information um, and i hope that this can benefit either yourself or someone else that's um that you know in your life that needs this and um the only way we can help one another is by sharing our own stories our own experiences and hoping that it would reach the right person at the right time. And that's all we can do. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, if you are um, finding this program beneficial to yourself, please be generous and share it with others. Once again, this has been Della's voice sparking your soul. It's